Don't worry. We already got our hostage, Sergeant Miller. here again. You do exactly as we say. We need information. You tell anyone or you don't cooperate. She's dead. What information? Wait for the call. It's me, love. No, I'm fine. I'm fine. It's just that I, I, I won't be able to get back tonight, love. We're up to our eyes in it. This conference thing tomorrow, you know. Has anyone called for me at home? No, no, no. It's just if, if they do, tell them that they can contact me at the station. But I, I'm really sorry about tonight, Jean. You take care of yourself, love. David, good lad. Stupid dog. Sash. Oh, morning, Alf. Sorry, I was miles away. You're in early. Yes, I, uh, I didn't get back home to York last night. I was catching up on paperwork, you know. Alf, uh, can you run a check on a license plate for me? What's it in relation to, Sarge? Oh, it's just a car I spotted last night. I'm expecting a personal call. Put it straight through, will you? Right, Joe. You must have a lot on with the conference. Yes. Yes, I have. Feels twinned with a French village. Peaceful uh, protest is one thing, throwing eggs is another. We shouldn't allow that fascist in this country. He's an official delegate, he has a right to be here. And we have the right to protest in an orderly way, all right? He said on the wireless there'd be trouble. Back you go, you head is. Uh, that vehicle check, Sarge, the uh, license plate you gave me, it doesn't exist. No. Shall I inform HQ and get it passed around division? No. No, don't do that. Why not? I may have written it down wrong. Unlike you, Sarge. Yes, well, we all make mistakes. Leave it, all right? Fair enough. You say so. Has anyone called for me? No. Are you expecting someone in particular? Possibly, yes.
Student protests makes me laugh, it really does. You know, my generation had to fight a real war in Europe. And we certainly threw more than eggs at the Germans. Well, I, hang on a, a sec, I'm lost now. I thought the man that was in the car that people were throwing eggs at was French. French, German, they're all the same, blooming Europeans. I do hope we never join the common market. It's because you're an old stick in the mud, Bernie. And anyway, keep your voices down. That chap staying here, he's from France. He's very well-mannered. He's quite dishy, actually. Speaks really good English. Do you reckon? He never seems to know what I'm going on about. The minute I open my gob, he goes, pardon? Uh, well, we all struggle to know what you're on about at times, Dawn. You too, please, Gina. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad you've come in, Nurse Cassidy. Mm -hmm. I'd appreciate a word. Oh, my well, word. I was wondering how you were fixed for coming round to see me. Oh, OK. Um, let's see, I'm round your way tomorrow morning, about 10 o'clock, all right? Oh, that'd be grand. Our David's at work and I'm on my own. Are you all right? You seem a bit... Let's talk about that tomorrow. OK. I don't know what's wrong with Aunt Peg. She's hardly touched that drinking. She's barely said a word since she came in. Women, David. They're moody by nature. You never know where you are with them. Oh, unlike you, eh, Bernie? You're always a bundle of laughs. <laughs> Sergeant Miller? How's my daughter? Are you going to give me any idea of what this is all about? Not now, Alf. I'm on the phone. I've got someone at the door. Oh, don't hang up! Morning, Sergeant Miller. Sorry to interrupt. You know DI Rankin, Special Branch? Sir. Sergeant? There's something you'd like to put us in the picture about. Right, I'll, uh, I'll join you in a second. We have reliable information that an attempt may be made on Michael Dubois' life whilst he's here. Dubois is suspected by many in France of having been a Nazi collaborator during the war. He's detested in Algeria for his hardline resistance to independence. He has enemies all across Europe. We're taking this intelligence very seriously. We have an armed response unit on standby. Are you expecting a lone assassin, sir? Or could this be a, a team of gunmen? We don't have that detail. According to the French police, it could be a lone professional, a team, or possibly a group of extreme radical students. Some French students protesting there yesterday. We heard them talking. Well, it's vital we report anything arousing suspicion. Uh, sorry to butt in, Sarge. Perhaps we should mention your sighting of that car with the false number plates the other night. I don't think that's relevant to this, Alf. It was a minor traffic offence, and I doubt if the plates are false. I took the number down in a hurry up. I've probably got it wrong. Given this student threat, maybe you should have a word with the protesters, see what they know. Find out all you can about any foreign students who are here. Are you all right, Sergeant? Thank you for your concern, PC Mason. May I suggest you get on with your duties? You gobbled that down, smartish. Pardon? Well, you can't be a full English, I reckon. Can you get them in France? A full English in France? No. You get a full French in England? Oh, I, well, I don't know. I'm not here, any road. <laughs> so, what have you got planned for today? Anything nice? Merci, mademoiselle. Bonne journée. I wouldn't have bothered you, only I've been getting these pains lately. Oh, what sort of pains? Oh, it may be some at a note. It's uh, across my chest and I've been suffering shortness of breath and stiffness in my arm. And have you seen a doctor at all? Oh, no. I've never bothered with doctors. As a, a country woman, I prefer to let nature take its course. Who is your GP? 
I haven't got one. Well, I've never liked to go to doctors and hospitals. It's all such a rigmarole. Peggy. I thought you could help as a friend, you know. You must get registered with the GP. It's irresponsible not to. In the meantime, I'll take your blood pressure and your temperature. So you're not in any pain at this moment, then? It comes and goes. And you haven't suffered any injuries? No, no, nothing like that. Well, your blood pressure and your temperature are normal. So there's nothing to worry about, then? I'm only a nurse, Peggy. I can't give you a full diagnosis. From the symptoms you've described, it could be anything from indigestion to something like mild angina. That's to do with heart attacks, isn't it? I'm not saying it is angina. Only heart attacks run in our family. My cousin Ned died of one a couple of months back. Come on, Peggy, don't go worrying yourself unnecessarily. Get yourself registered with a doctor and properly examined. Especially if these pains continue. My advice to you is abandon any plans you have to invade the conference. And contact us if you hear of any extremist talk from any other students. All right? Right. Well, he's definitely putting on weight. <sighs> While his mother's desperately trying to lose some. Oh, I want to get back into shape, Carol. Oh, it's often a struggle after a baby. He's a bonny lad as our Philip, aren't you? Doing really well. There he is. Hello, Billy uh, Billy. He's a smelly little Billy Billy. You need his uh, nappy changing, don't you? Oh, can I do it, Auntie Gina? Uh, no, you're supposed to be cleaning the guest bedrooms, not playing mums and babies. Go on. Spoil spot. Spoil. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh. I'm sorry, I thought you'd be out. Blimey, that's a lot of brass. Pardon? Please, you should leave. Oh, no, sorry, I, I was just coming to come in your room to clean the it. The room is fine. I don't wish her to be clean today. Allez. What? S'il vous plaît. Huh? Up. Gotta go out, Alf. Back in an hour. All right. Where to, if anyone asks? Just tell them I'll be back in an hour. I thought you'd be having your break. I popped in the bakers and I got your fancy cake each. What was this in aid of? Somebody's birthday? No, I just thought it would be a nice gesture to my two most favourite people. Why? Ooh, posh cakes. Gotta get a couple of plates. Thanks, Aunt Peg. I love these. I know you do, David. That's why I got them. <laughs> You mean the world to me, you know. I've not got much to show for my life, but I'm lucky to know you. The kindest, the most loyal nephew any auntie could wish for. Bless you, David. Just for being you. Oh, I wish you wouldn't do that. Do what, lovey? Well... Put to me up and buy me cakes and that. I, mean, I, I know you must be after something. It really annoys me, Aunt Peg. Why don't you just come out and tell me what's on your mind? I just did, David. I just did.
Delta Alpha 24 to control, over. Uh, go ahead, Joe, over. I've just been talking to the students. Have I missed a call? Over. Uh, no, Joe, you haven't. Over. I just saw Sergeant Miller's car. Thought something might be happening. Over. No, he uh, just went out for an hour. Didn't say where. Over. I see. Uh, thanks, Alf. Out. Come on your own, I trust. Of course. I do hope you've not been tempted to play games, Sergeant. Of course not. I've told you, I won't do anything to put my daughter at further risk. You tell anyone about her? A friend? Your wife? Jean, isn't it? Not even my wife. Is Cheryl all right? Yeah, so far. She'll stay that way so long as you do as you're told. I said I will. We need police uniforms and warrant cards by tomorrow morning. It's impossible. I can't do it. Well then, you're going to have to help us. You're going to have to use your authority as a police officer. What are you planning? You'll find out. It's planned for tomorrow. I'll call you. I can't just leave work like that. I need notice. We're very busy at present. Of course you are. What with the uh, conference and everything. I need proof Cheryl is unharmed. Let me talk to her next time we call. I don't think you're in a position to dictate terms, Sergeant. You wait here for five minutes after I've gone, understood? He's like a big kid most of the time. Yeah, but he's a willing worker. Yeah. I, I get to wondering how we'll manage if anything happens to me. I mean, I'll leave him everything I've got, of course, but that won't amount to very much. He'll need somebody to look out for him then. And I'm relying on you, Bernie. Oh, of course I will. Without being unduly morbid, I could easily pass away before you do. I doubt it. No, you will go on forever. Same again, Oscar. Yeah, well, let's see the colour of your money first. You've never been a trusting soul, have you, Oscar Blaketon? But I'm very fond of you, just the same. I consider myself lucky to live amongst decent folk round here. Take one for yourself while you're at it. Yay! <laughs> Sarge? What are you doing here? I saw you speeding up here. I thought you might need some help. Are you all right? Inside, quickly. How dare you follow me like that? Something's wrong. What is it, Sarge? Sergeant, to you. You could have blown everything. Were you seen? Well, if you mean by the man that you just met, then no. I was careful not to be. He's a snout. An informer I've had for some time. You could have destroyed his trust blundering in like that. A snout? Yes. That you've known for some time? Yes. Then why did he feel it was necessary to come carrying a gun? He was picked up by a man in a car. I wonder if it'll have the same false license plates that Alf mentioned. You tell me exactly what's going on, or I go to DS Dawson with this. They've got my daughter.
Gerald's my youngest. She's at Leeds University, they must have grabbed her from there. You don't know what else they want? The conference was mentioned, it might be something to do with that. Then you could be wrapped up in a murder. Well, you heard what D.I. Rankin said, they're expecting an attempt on Dubois' life. It's my daughter's life that concerns me. Sarge, you have to inform HQ. You do know that? No. It's too risky to go public. I'd be gambling with her life. They'd make me take compassionate leave. And I can't risk losing contact with the kidnappers. So what are you going to do? I'll handle this my way. These people, whoever they are, mustn't have the slightest idea that I've told anyone. So forget everything you've seen and heard. I can't do that. Let me help you. No. If the only way to save my daughter is to do as they ask, then I will. Even if it means losing my job. You'll lose a lot more than your job. My family comes first. You blab your mouth off and anything happens to Cheryl, I'll swing for you, Mason, I swear it. Stay out of it. Understood? Mason, you got something for us? No, I just came to let you know that I talked to local students. I don't think they're going to break in. Also, I'm still trying to locate the French students that were here to question them. It's important we prevent them from doing anything reckless. Everyone's getting very jumpy here. Mm. Was there something else bothering you? Do we know any more about the threat to Dubois' life? Yes. Interpol have just confirmed that they are aware of a definite plot to assassinate him here. We've got the specialist firearms unit on high alert. So your student friends and anyone else will be best advised to keep out. You sure there was nothing else? No, Sergeant. That's all. When you've done that, Doc, will you pop round to the Aidensphere Arms? Well, I'd love to, but uh, we've enough on without me skiving off for a pint. It knows. Federation <laughs> rep. A new form's come from the Widows and Orphans Fund. You need to get Gina to sign it. I'm not sure if I'm the right person. Phil Bellamy's death was not your fault. As Fed Rep, you have a duty of care to Gina and her baby. Keeping in touch may benefit you both. Sarge? Anyone called? Uh, Lord Ashfordley about duck poaching on his estate. PC Weatherby's on his way there now. I meant for me, personally. No, Sarge. If anyone does, put them straight through. Right, make sure he stays wrapped up warm. I'm off for me lunch, if you can call it that. Are you still on the carrot juice diet, then? Yeah, you did say it takes time. Yeah, well, you should be losing weight by now, not piling it on. Hey, thanks a bunch. Go on. Uh. Hello there. Ah, mademoiselle. How is the baby today? He's fine, yes? Oh, oh, yeah, he's right as rain. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I think today the weather will be good. I don't know what he was talking about. He's been sitting. Miller? I've done, I've been so scared. Are you all right, love? <laughs> yes, I'm well. But the whole thing's been like a nightmare. You know? A monstrosity. A monstrosity? Is that what you said, love? Yes, that's exactly right. But just do what they say, Dad, please. You're satisfied. Next time I call, you'll be given instructions. <laughs> Alf, Sarge. I want the most detailed maps of the area we've got. My office, now! So, so I have to turn up at the surgery and then I've got forms to fill in. No, no, I'm not registered with any other doctor. If I was, we wouldn't be having this conversation, would we? 
No, I don't know where my old medical records are. Aren't you supposed to keep hold of them? Uh, I'll have to call you back. A Bobby's just turned up in my kitchen. Constable Weatherby, I've made a brew. Extra mug, please, David. Oh, no, thanks. It's not a social call. It's regarding poaching on Lord Ashfordley's estate. Ducks, to be precise. I've not been very well. Sorry? Have a David. Uh, no, she's had pains in that. I mean, that, that, that was the surgery in Ashfordly on the phone when you walked in. Mrs Armstrong, do you know anything about the poaching or not? Someone's been shooting ducks. Well, the way I feel, I can't even pick up a gun, let us all go out and use one. That's a ten-bore shotgun, isn't it? Y yes, it belonged to my cousin. Ned, he passed away recently, he left it to me in his will. That's an especially powerful gun. Designed for wildfowl. Ideal for shooting ducks. No, to me, it's a very precious family heirloom. There's part of our Ned still in that gun. And I wouldn't insult his memory by banging away at ducks with it. This one's been fired recently. I've marked your card, Mrs Armstrong. Stay off the estate. Have you got that? There you go. Thanks. Now, anything you need, get in touch. Federation will always help. Well, that's good to know. <laughs> Come here, little fella. <laughs> Something about the smell of young babies. You know, talcum powder and new baby. You know. Yes. Yeah, I do know. Thanks then, Don. Taking my place. So make your way along You okay? No. I'm not really. My Phil wants to be a dad so much. He never even got to hold our baby. Hey, hey, come here, come here. It's all right. You two are gonna be just fine. You always got a home and a family here. You know that. Hey, what do you think? So, have you asked her out yet? Oh, I, I... I don't expect she gets that much time off, you know, having to help out with the baby and all that. Oh, no, no, that put you off. Get in there, mate, before somebody else does. All quiet at the conference, I hope. Shouldn't really tell you this, but, um, since you're an ex-copper, we've had reports that an attempt might be made on a delegate's life by a professional assassin. Why are you talking about assassins, Jeff? <laughs> well, there's this French politician at the conference, you see. Not a very popular chap. We think a gunman might have come over here to kill him. We've got to protect him. There's a man here who has guns. What are you talking about, Don? Well, that French man who's staying here. I saw inside a case he had in his boot. He had two guns in there. <laughs> I'm fine, love, I'm fine. It's just that we're still hectic here. It doesn't look as I'll be back tonight either. I'm sorry, love. And you. Bye. It's all right, Sergeant. I've told no one. They let Cheryl speak to me. I think she tried to give me a clue. There's an old family joke. It started when she was little. We'd taken her to see a monastery, but she mispronounced it. She told everyone she'd been to where the monks live. A monstrosity. I'm sure she deliberately used the word on the phone. But according to Alf, there isn't a monastery within 50 miles of here. Well, what about an old one? Ancient ruins or something? There's nothing like that either, not that I can see. 
Urgent call from PC Weatherby uh, from the Aidensfield Arms. A guest has been spotted in possession of handguns. I've contacted Rankin and he's alerting firearms officers to join me there. Hold on a minute. Don't go overreacting. Uh, let me go. I'll discreetly check it out. There's no need. They're on the way. I don't want the place flooded by police. It might panic people. Make it look like... Like what? What's the problem? Just thought you should be informed, that's all. Sergeant Miller. Hold on a minute. Leave, please. Police officers. Is this your property, sir? Bien sûr, je suis antiquaire. Antique style. Do you understand? I presume that was them. It might help if you kept me in the picture, Sarge. If it's to do with Dubois, you're putting your own life at risk as well as his. They've specialist firearms teams out there. You have to tell me what's going on. It's not Dubois or the conference. They're a criminal gang, not political extremists. Their target tomorrow is quite different. Hello. Have you not been to... Have you slept in that chair all night? I've had a terrible night. It's very difficult to sleep in a bed. Every time I turn over, I get this sharp pain here. Well, I've had enough of this. If, if you won't go and see a doctor, I'm going to have to fetch one here to see you. I still say we did the right thing last night. It's better to be safe than sorry. Yeah, it was a shame your dozy girlfriend couldn't recognise a pair of antique duelling pistols when she saw them. She is not my girlfriend. Ah, but you do admit she's dozy then. Morning. Alf, is Sergeant Mallory? Uh, in his office. He's been on the phone a bit. Just keep out of this. It has to be a major crime for them to go to these lengths. Tell me what they're planning. No. So you're prepared to cooperate with an armed gang? Lose your career, your good name, your liberty, possibly even your life? If you had children, you'd understand. You're leaving me no choice now. I have to go over your head, report what I know. You must do what you think is right. I can't stop you. But there's an innocent life at stake here. I'd be very careful if I were you. routinely inform us which route they're going to take and when. Good. Now you got what you want. What about my daughter? Yeah, we're not there yet. As soon as we got the payroll in our possession and we're safely gone, you'll be told where to find her. What about the guards on the van? There's three of us. We're armed. They'll cooperate. We're professionals. We don't want unnecessary loss of life. Is there anything going on today in our patch, uh, apart from the conference, I mean? It's uh, all very routine, as I recall. Do you know where D.S. Dawson is? She's out of the conference. Uh, do you want me to try and get her for you? No, no, I, I can't discuss this over the air. There you are, a daily log. As you can see, nothing out of the ordinary. Hang on. This security van passing through it. Is that a regular run? Monthly. It's a large cash payroll from a bank in Leeds to an industrial plant in the northeast. They vary the times and dates, and those are the details of today's run. Has Sergeant Miller seen this look? 
As always. First thing he asked for when he came in. You get him off the main road, and then we hit him here. Understood? Don't look so glum. Every copper in the area is patrolling that conference. This should be a piece of cake. Right, let's move. You think Sergeant Miller may be about to rob a security van? His daughter's been kidnapped. He's in a terrible state. He didn't want to put her at risk by informing HQ. So where is he now? I don't know. He's turned his radio off. This is the daily log with details of the payroll route. You haven't betrayed him. You had to report this. If we let him assist in, in an armed robbery, he's finished. Just then, following a tip-off, French police arrest an armed man in Calais last night. That's our would-be assassin. Takes the pressure off us. How much of the long faces? This is good news all round. Are you reporting these suspicions to me officially or unofficially? It's up to you. Either way, how do we stop him? The road ahead's blocked. I'm going to have to divert you. Take this track about half a mile, turn right, right again, bring you back up onto this road. to believe you're involving yourself in an armed robbery. It's the security payroll, isn't it? Look, come on, Sergeant, we know what you're going through. D.S. Dawson's prepared to keep this away from HQ for now. To give you a chance not to do anything stupid. Despite your daughter's situation, you'll be in serious trouble if this goes ahead, Sergeant. Thank you both for your concern, but I think you might be just too late. As we say, nobody will get hurt. Out. Move. Open it. As soon as I realised they were regular criminals and not political extremists, I called HQ. We set this up. You'll regret this, Sergeant. You say you're professionals, and you won't want to make matters worse. Where's my daughter? You lost your daughter? Find it yourself. We know nothing about it. Where is she? No, Sergeant. Take him to the station. How are you feeling? Worse, if anything. Right, Peggy, you're going to see a doctor. I've chased up your old medical records. They're on the way to a GP practice in Ashfordley. Brought some forms for you to fill in to get you registered. And I'll drive you over there myself. I doubt I can write. I can barely move my arm. And I've got this horrible dark blue discoloration under my skin. It's spread right across my chest. OK, well, I'd better take a look at that before we move you. David, could you excuse us? Oh, yeah. Um, oh, you do as Nurse Custody told you, Aunt Pagger. I was certain that there were only three of them in the gang. So when we nicked them, we'd have them all. There'd be no one left with Cheryl to harm her. And not being political extremists, well, I assumed they'd let us know where she was. 
I mean, why make things worse for yourself? They've admitted nothing. Off record, Travis wants a deal. He'll only say where she is if we guarantee greatly reduced charges against him. And if we don't? He seems confident she'll not easily be found without their help. HQ aren't keen to sanction a deal yet. They're hoping one of the three will crack. Give me five minutes alone with them. You'll soon see them crack. I can't let you do that, George. What have I done? Look, there must be some way we can find her. What about that family clue she gave you about the monastery? There aren't any round here. No, there isn't. Not that I know of. How about something similar to a monastery? Uh, a convent or an abbey? Something to do with monks or nuns? Hang on. There's an old pub. It's closed now. It's out on the moors beyond Strensfield. The monk's head. Could that be it? got a nasty contusion, what you call a bad bruise, really. Have you no idea what caused it, Peggy? Not a clue. A bruise? Oh, well, I've got an idea about that. Yeah, David. Oh, well, she's just... She's got, they've got this new gun. Well, well, it's not new. It was left with by her cousin, but... Well, we we're out shooting ducks on the Ashfordley estate. No, we haven't. Go on, David. Well, but... PC Weatherby says that that is a very powerful gun and, well, she's not used to it, so... I was wondering, do you think that might could have caused the, the bruise? The recoil, you mean? Yeah, it may not only have bruised her shoulder, it could have trapped a nerve, sending the pains across your chest. We'll let the doctor examine you, but I think you may find those shooting pains might be exactly that, Peggy. Pains from shooting. A farewell gift, madame, um, for a pleasant, if uh, eventful stay. It's a pewter frame, in which can be placed a photo of your son. Oh, thank you. How lovely. I also have a gift for you, mademoiselle. <laughs> Slimy, I, I didn't think you'd get me out, not after all the trouble, of course, did you? It's a language book. Bab, I'd all love to learn French. Uh, no, mademoiselle, uh, the book is called How to Speak English. Oh, I bet you're feeling better now that your new doctor has confirmed that it's just a, you know, trap nerve. Perhaps I do feel better, but I'll thank you to keep your big gob shut in future. Oh, why is that? Telling her about me poaching them ducks. She's only walking out with a local bobby, you daft ape. <laughs> That's more like it. Well, I know where I am with you when you tell me off like that. I'll do more than tell you off if you don't start using your noddle from time to time. <laughs> Here, you get these in. Right, same again then, is it? And uh, one for me, of course. You'll be lucky. He's buying them any road. I thought I might knock up a curry. Bit of an experiment. Are you willing to risk it? Yeah, why not? <laughs> it's nice to see Peggy back to her usual self. I'm not sure everyone would agree with you there. Gina was saying she reckons Frenchmen are very sexy. Really? And what do you think? I agree with her. But on balance, myself, I prefer Scotsmen. One, two, three, one, two, three. That's 
manager. I need a suitable escort, someone who will dignify the proceedings and, of course, lead the dancing with me. You don't need to mention this to anyone, do you? Are you a spy? Clever boys. You clever, clever boys.